I'm joined by uh, Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald? Norm uh, Weir. Yeah, wait, right. I am the uh, 2017 uh, former world champion. Today we have Troy White versus Brendan McLeod. Both of them are known for taking aggressive bids. Troy uh, won out in this uh, regards. He's got a 24 point bid versus Brendan's uh, 22 point bid. They've uh, selected a most wanted. Uh, so it appears Brendan will be going second. Um, Troy will be going first with initiative. As you can see, they're really throwing the obstacles in one area, kind of interestingly trying to dip. I don't know if they're going to dictate the fight or have it in an open area. I'm assuming Troy is going to want to play around them being much more maneuverable. And uh, the no squadrons, the no squadron less turns. Um, I am not a fan of that, but I can see the, you know, it's always been a like, how many squadrons do people bring? That's been always a high point of contention in the meta. And, you know, I think it's very brave to not bring any in this day and age. But that's just me. Well, Troy is certainly a master of the uh, high bid, all ship list. So he's had a lot of experience playing this kind of build. So I think that he'll have a decent chance of potentially shutting down the squadrons, especially with the... Uh, slicer tool quantum storm combo that he's got the quasar does have a skilled first officer so he can prevent he has to get through that first that could potentially mess things up for the whole slicer dream we'll see how things deploy if, if the quasar is under fire or cover of the squadrons and the uh, isd1 uh, i don't know about that Qua quantum storm living but it, you know it's going to all come down to deployment so the Gazanti was just deployed um, for Brendan at speed one, and Troy responded by placing his Nebulon support uh, with a skilled first officer and slave turret at speed two. Brendan's measuring distance to the station. I think that will be the focal point of uh, this particular match. I've played with BT Avengers, but I've never gone second with it. Does it seem like it's going to be difficult to force a uh, what we call in the... Uh, competitive group a fork is he going to be able to set something up make, having Troy to have a questionable activation first I think the threat of the the BT Avenger with a with an admo around may force a misplay so not necessarily a fork but certainly a threat radius that uh, Troy will have to respect okay I you know with Troy going first uh very rarely uh, have I seen an admonition pop in ISD um, before. It has happened. You could get the dream shot. I'm not sure with this particular list. Uh, you know, it would involve blocking some braces with some lucky accuracies and generating maximum damage. So it's going to be interesting to see. Maybe he doesn't even, he tries to avoid the ISD and tries to cut off the uh, Quasar and, and destroy that. Because that seems like a way more easy uh, potential kill. I, I think Brendan's objective is going to be to equalize the activation game as quickly as he can. So push those squadrons forward, try and uh, remove some of those uh, GR-75s or maybe another ship. Mm -hmm. And um, then see how it pans out with the uh, MC-30s coming in and what they go for. I, I think the an ISD with the way that it's set up here can take maybe three to four hits from an admo or mc mc30 before it's actually in trouble so he may be able to take some damage on the isd um but so we'll see how it's how it rolls out yeah just looking at the whole squadron gameplay here there appears to be three to four potential bombers here and, and no rerolls. So Mon Mothma is going to get some potential good value out of those evades, uh, and, uh, assuming that everything is in close range. Now, making his grand return to competitive scene is Major Rhymer, and you know that's a nice little trick that might be discussed later. But providing uh, attacks at now close range, meaning Mon Mothma will get some, uh, be able to reroll some dice. So I think Mon Mothma could be a very, very key important thing for keeping his ships alive against the squadrons. Now, why, why is uh, Major Rhymer such a interesting piece? Why is he coming back? The Super Star Destroyer builds have involving a upgrade called Quad Laser Turrets, which gives your ship counter one against squadrons, but only at distance one. Mm -hmm. So Major Rhymer provides a 
soft counter, if you will, to keep it out, keep squadrons out of distance one and at close range to shoot the Star Destroyer. I, I like Brendan's positioning here. Um, he's, he's got a lot of uh, options to develop his board. Whether he chooses to turn in or pull out with that ISD and Quasar and uh, just force Troy to go through that uh, web of squadrons. So we just, uh, Troy, we can hear the audio from the table, so we'll try and keep you updated. Uh, Troy was pointing out the speeds of his ships. It looks like most of the Gazantes will be going speeds one and two with his, uh, as well as that Nebulon there. The Nebulon without Yavaris title, what is going on? That is craziness. I'm just kidding. Um, but we also have his uh, MC-30s coming in and the Corvette coming in pretty fast at speeds three and four, uh, respectively. I believe Brendan is deployed very slowly in the corner and is just going to try and slow roll until the ships come in. Again, stating, I think Brendan's positioning right now for deployment is, is really good to, to mitigate some of the damage this all-ship list can do to, to his sensitive carriers. Absolutely, yes. The, the squadrons will take the, quote, brunt of the sp uh, force coming in. And then maybe the Quasar will be able to hide among those asteroid fields uh, near the top left. So Brendan's deliberating his choices. Oh, there we go. And he has chosen the, the Nebulon to be the objective ship. Oh, we've just highlighted in red. It's uh, shown on our uh, little dashboard in red on the left side. And the marker for Brendan's most wanted ship is the Gazant. his Gazanti. Yep. Troy's just commenting he only uses one command for the entire game, which uh, I believe that's going to be navigate. If I was trying to navigate around here, I think that would be our best choice. But Not concentrate fire? Uh, the, the concentrate fire doesn't work well on those, those GR-75s, but I'd love to believe. Uh, they're not combat refits. I think that's a missed opportunity. I think he could have dug a little bit into his uh, colossal bid and got some blue dice out of the front. In my opinion. Nav command for the CR-90B. It's just going to be uh, posturing for most of the first couple turns. And you can hear the crowds really excited for the start of this game. We are also in the room with uh, the X-Wing Grand Championships. It's a full room and uh, they're quite the uh, rambunctious crowd. <laughs> So a speed one maneuver and an engine tech from the CR-90B. Brendan activating the Gazanti. Squadron command taking the token. In my uh, cave-brained mind, those MC-30s are just going to run in a straight line towards their target and try and blow it up and then fly away. Is there is there much room for posturing? They're, they're deployed very far apart. Is there much room to I, play around? I think Troy's got a very difficult board state to deal with because even if he charges straight in, he's going to deal with the squadrons and he's up against JJ. So JJ can just turn away and completely disengage. So he has to create an umbrella to capture whatever, wherever Brendan will eventually disengage to. Okay. So we yeah. just saw Brendan's uh, Gazanti move at speed one. Uh, and a squadron token was passed over to the ISD. Troy has revealed a navigate command with the uh, foresight and is moving, uh, moving like it forward. forward. So here we see Troy trying to set up the umbrella, strategic advisor being used. So Troy is going to spend the first two to three rounds posturing his heavy hitters to try and predict and capture whatever Brendan's going to do with his board. Troy uh, reveals another navigate. Troy taking a navigate token on his admonition, doing an inside turn at speed two. So I believe a squall activation. So uh, for those unfamiliar with squalls, it allows you to up, not quite activate, but allows you to move three squadrons. Uh, before you reveal your dial. For it, important. The oh. trick is, if you can throw them inside a, an obstacle, um, they can be at range one of something, but it's not counting as engaged because of the obstruction from the obstacle. Mm -hmm. 
So you can potentially, as you can see Brendan doing, heal up your squadrons on the station, and then when you do your normal activation, you activate that squadron, land on the station again, and do another attack. So very, a, very smart. So it's a very high utility value upgrade. And that also, uh, it's in that particular scenario, it's very important with rock placement. So trying to have a good engagement around the obstacles. The Quasar had a navigate uh, command, which Brendan banked. And the Quasar is just going to float up slowly at speed one. I think he's, I think he's uh, thinking of going to speed two, but we will find out. He chooses to go only speed one and turn in slightly. Brendan commenting, he did not screw up right away, so we'll see where that ISD lands up. Uh, <laughs> you know, if I was a betting man, <laughs> oh, he's measuring. Well, we'll see if he does not ram. But, you know, if he's done a nav command, he can always just sit there and wait a turn. I uh, think this might be a hasty stop to the station for both of Brendan's um, <laughs> capital ships uh, to clear those damage cards, which he is going to start piling on after he rams his Quasar and then later the Gazanti. Oh, yeah. That's always the fun part from first learning uh, how to play. You run over your squadrons first game, you ram into your ships, and then fly all of them off the board. And that's your first <laughs> game of Armada. But once you get past that point... <laughs> You really, you, you'll understand that... Uh, it's only up after that point. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And somehow you win sometimes. But you never know. Speed 2 on the number 5 um, GR75. That's the Quantum Storm. More Navigate commands coming out of Troy. So, a lot of posturing. We'll s oh, takes the token. Navigate command. Navigate token on the ISD. Those are fancy looking tokens. Are they... Oh, moment of truth. So he's going speed one. So oh, I can't tell. Well I'm, done, I'm Brendan. Clapping. Well done, Brendan. Fits like a glove, at least from this angle. I'm counting this uh, view to parallax. Um, but it looks like he had a few millimeters of clearance between the nose of that ISD and the back of that quasar. So Brendan has not screwed up just yet. He could have <laughs> dropped to, to speed zero if he was not feeling particularly confident. But... Uh, He's managed to escape uh, self-damage for now. For now. He must have practiced that. I'm, I'm sure I, I would have messed that up a couple of times. But, However, Troy, Troy, the uh, Nebulon support looks like uh, hit the <laughs> oh, no. Ahsoka GR75. Oh, no. GR Is that a strategic play to get some additional uh, turning on that uh, Nebulon? My thought is yes. This could be a next level play for the future. We'll see. We'll Maybe see. he's angling around that uh, that Nebulon to get uh, a good angle on that uh, Quasar later in the game. I see you've taken a note there about this. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely bring this up at the end of the game, just for everybody, just as a reminder of how this move may have won him the game. The the option for uh, tricky maneuvers uh, is certainly on Brendan with the Jer Gerard inside turn. So that, uh, that's a scenario where your, fit, your ship fits at a higher speed maneuver. Sorry, it doesn't fit at a higher speed maneuver, so you keep moving it back. But you've got a double click on your slowest speed, and it does an inside turn, which kind of positions your ship back and at an angle. It's a, it's a really sneaky maneuver to get a lot more mobility out of your, your big ships. And this is from Jared Gerard's ability, where you take a damage to have... Two additional ticks on your uh, slowest speed maneuver. It's very, very sneaky. I've uh, managed to somehow sneak an ISD out of a front arc of a Liberty before. It somehow ended up in their side arc, and nobody understood how that happened. It's uh, it's amazing. One one haul on a GR on a Gazanti is uh, a very small price to pay to accomplish that uh, sneaky maneuver. Absolutely. One haul and one shield. So <laughs> it's a small price to potentially set up for an excellent follow-up in the future round. Brendan moving up his squadrons. Uh, he's putting them into a very aggressive position, making sure that everything is in range of that Quasar. Um, or at and, least Jendon. And he's, he's going to... It's, it's kind of the, the deterrence for Troy being overly aggressive. As you said, if... if uh, if you were playing uh, as Troy and you just charged everything, charge everything in, you would very quickly meet Brendan's squads. 
and Brennan set him up to, to meet that head-on charge. So Troy's being disciplined, taking a little bit of damage on his uh, GR-75 uh, to, set up, to set up that umbrella to catch Brennan's ships. So we've begun round two. Uh, players are planning their dials. I'm very curious. I, I know I mentioned this a little earlier. If if you feel that the uh, the squadron damage is high enough without rerolls, you don't have Sloan for reroll. You don't have a bomber command center for your bombers. Obviously, Merrick and Jendon are a very strong force together, but. You know, it, not, it always a little scares me a little not having an extra source of consistency for those squadrons. I disagree with that. Um, Merrick is effectively two, two damage every time he activates. With Jendon, that becomes four. Darth Vader, expectation value is your total damage is now five. Major Rhymer, six. And then your three blue dice squadrons, that's uh, 1.5 expectation value from your damage so you have a total of 7.5 expectation damage from Brendan's squadrons is that including Mo the mon motha factor though and the uh, major derlin factor reducing that damage as well that is not taking it into play but he's he's putting quite a bit of pressure if he focuses it all on one ship so Absolutely. you're going to have to start taking attacks on your tokens on your abilities and it eventually gets through. So persistence is key. And uh, I, th I think it's a serious threat. I, I don't think that uh, Troy should underestimate the squadron complement from Brendan. So right now we've seen uh, the Quantum Soar moving forward and uh, we've moved the uh, CR-90B. Uh, more engine teching, more navigating coming out of Troy. This is all the work that he's putting in up front to get a good catch on Brendan's ships. You have to be very cautious as the all-ship player here, not to be overly aggressive and to get the right, right surround at the right time. So Squall is gonna push a few squads. He's pushing up uh, Jendon. So this is the key relay piece to keep everything uh, in range of his carriers. So yes. squall, squall pushing up Jendon, and now the Squall activation. So the the always one of the things squadrons uh, not necessarily suffer from, but the activation range. Since there is a boosted comm, which allows you to activate at long range as opposed to just medium, uh, the Quasar can play a little more safe behind the asteroids, behind the ships, and tucked into the umbrella a little more of his... Uh, you know other main capital ships and squadrons but there's always that that chance now I, I don't expect it to happen because people are practice these lists very often but there's a chance that your squadrons could fly off into the middle of nowhere and be unable to activate and without uh, the row keyword on those there's you know always the opportunity that you won't be able to activate them to get damage in now having probably practiced this list for I don't know how many months uh, I don't see it as a problem. But. I, I believe Brendan was messaging me shortly uh, <laughs> before the start of this tournament, and he had at least uh, five or six different lists which he was considering. So I think this is a fresh construction. <laughs> so this, is on, this isn't on you if something goes terribly wrong. Absolutely, probably it is. <laughs> now, the squadron posturing, I, having played against Admonition, it's very tough to kill, so we've got a speed four movement and that is the foresight ship coming in um so if people are unfamiliar with the foresight title essentially a doubling of uh, tokens so if you evade you one die you'll be able to evade a second die and if you redirect you will be able to choose an additional hull zone to move damage now again with mon mothma very strong effect you can uh, at close range you can uh cause two dice to be re-rolled as opposed to just one which could be very, very strong against, say, somebody who sets their die to a critical. <laughs> or, But that's still a very quick way to exhaust all your tokens. Absolutely. Brendan revealing a navigate command on his ISD. He has opted to spend it, and he is uh, likely increasing to speed 2. Now, how quickly he turns in is an important decision. If he turns in too quick, 
His ISD will be in the side. His ISD will be shooting from the side to that approaching foresight. So I think what he's done here with only a single tick is a very conservative play, but it is the right play for the approaching foresight. I, just to uh, as a quick comment, um, the bot at the bottom of your screen there is not the bottom of the table. His sh ISD is still on the table, so don't anybody panic out there. Uh, there's about a couple centimeters of space. So an inch for everybody in, uh, watching from America. Um, of space for y him to maneuver. So we've got some squadron pos uh, squ I believe squadron posturing. Was a, that was not a squall activation, uh, as those have been activated. But uh, So oh, this is the squadron phase. phase. Uh, before that, we saw the Nebulon B drop to speed zero from Troy. I think that's a pretty good play that may pay dividends later in the game. So a very, very cautious play coming out of the Nebulon. Brendan is moving his squadrons in to look to start potentially putting some damage on those. He confirmed with Troy just now that all of those ships, numbers 1, 2, and 3, only have a single blue die for anti-squadron. So all the measuring that Brendan is doing is making sure that he's just outside squadron, uh, anti-squadron fire, and he's also kind of getting an eye for what's the long range, what's the close range that um, Troy's ships can reach next turn. So a speed 4 maneuver is roughly the distance of your uh, full range ruler. So if you if you measure from the nose of your ship, you can kind of get an estimate of where your ship will be if it continues at speed 4. So they're kind of eyeballing where those MC-30s can potentially end up in a turn or two. EWS going to the front of the foresight and the back of the admonition. Oh, are they both on the back? They both be able to be on the back. Oh, he changed it to the back right here. So both of them are on the back. And Hondo. I have and uh, people Hondo under tokens. familiar for Hondo. You will be able to grab two different uh, command tokens and as assign them to two different ships. And then your opponent receives two of the remaining tokens and assigns to the ships. He gave a engineering and a squadron over to Brendan which means a conch fire and navigate taken by Troy. He has replaced his token on his Gazanti with the squadron token and he has placed the engineering token from Hondo on his ISD. Uh, Hondo's always been a bit of a double-edged sword, one the little sh side a little sharper than the other yeah. for sure. But uh, there's been a times where I've given a concentrate fire and then all of a sudden they go from a blank to a double and then I regret my decision. But I've always found Hondo had been a great inclusion for keeping ships uh, very flexible in what they can do yep. and where they're going. So we have a comsat activation with a nav token going over to the Nebulon. This is a speed zero Nebulon. Very important So to uh, get moving again. Another inside turn coming from the uh, Comsnet GR75. I'm uh, I'm a little curious though. Why is the Quantum Storm not lazily drifting towards the carriers? I guess the uh, skilled first officer is scaring him off. I I'd like to think so, but it can very quickly swing around. So the uh, Quantum Storm would allow him to go at a fake speed 4. Strategic Advisor being used on the ISD. Oh, quantum, as we speak, Quantum Storm's activating. Quantum Storm activating with a nav. And we'll see where he goes. Is he going to turn in? I think, I think now is the time to turn in. Ah, Troy. Maybe possibly hearing the caster's table. <laughs> uh, deciding that it is time to pull the Quantum Storm into the fight. Now a quantum storm that arrives at a t at the perfect moment in the late game is certainly better than a quantum storm that charges in and dies before it is relevant. So this is kind of another late game hedge that Troy may be doing. He's proxying his uh, Nebulon and then trying to see what kind of turn he can do with that quantum storm. And he is not engaging with the quantum storm. Brendan letting out a little chuckle. 
We have a squadron command coming out of the Gazanti. Yes, it is. So does the bombing commence with the EWS placement? If it was on the side, he could potentially force uh, Brendan's squadrons to overcommit and be out of range of a carrier for the following round. So the, the EWS on the rear is likely a, a hedge for a future activation. So squadron command with the tokens spent on the Gazanti. First squadrons going in. Yep. And we have a major Rhymer activating. Again, my boy coming back, paying off big time. So he's just going to be uh, measuring just to get the ideal placement for there. Just, just at the very edge. That's yeah. the way you got to do it, and making sure that you're not double arcing yourself for flak. And here we have the first die roll of the game. Oh, beauty! Double, oh, well, double hit. Mon Mothma, though. We'll see what happens. So, um, does Brendan get his bonus points since it is birthday? Uh, Yes, but he has to tell us his age, and he will refuse to do that. So <laughs> until he does, then no. So here comes the reroll, down to one. Not bad. Good utility out of the mod Mothma so far. And this is damage being uh, put onto the admonition. Second squadron. This looks like Merrick. And Brendan measuring if Merrick will reach. Come on, guys. Merrick steal. He does everything. But the question is where. And anywhere. Not anywhere. Now he's got a double arc. Now he's going to take some uh, a little bit of flak damage. It adds up over a game. It does. But he's yes. he's engaging close to the station so it might not be it might might not be a relevant point. They just checked for arc and uh, Brendan being more generous to Troy than Troy himself. So mm -hmm. only one arc. Two dice coming in from Merrick Stahl. Two crits. Two crits. Let's see what Mon Mothma does. An evade being spent to reroll one of the crits, and it is a hit. And this is not. Ooh, he spends it to admonition away the damage. As uh, if you're familiar with admonition, it allows you to discard a dice to cancel one attack die. So a very very good attack uh, damage reduction. Being able to first spend the token and then deleting any damage that comes into. Very obnoxious. It's not as much of a deal tossing away an early um, defense token uh, because there is a Wallax Blissex on the admonition, which allows Troy to recover a defense token later. And if you ever, if you guys missed that popping up on the screen, uh, Colonel Jundan activated, which will allow a squadron at range one to two to attack in his place, essentially. So a, a crit and an uh, accuracy. I believe he's blocking the green or the good accuracy. Yep, and there goes the other admonitions evade. So damage reduced to zero. So a total of two damage done, one to each arc. Yep, that is correct. Seems okay. And you'll be able to grab uh, the uh, token back Admonition is a is a tough beast because you have to continually put pressure on it, put pressure on it, and commit to taking it down. Because so many admonition players find a way to run it away with a single hull point, and it is so infuriating. As I, I had a game recently where an admonition flew from my front arc around the side of a superstar destroyer and just away. It was very sad. And While Explicit's being used, which covers an evade. Some anti anti squadron fire coming out of the <laughs> admonition. Troy, Troy commenting he needs dice. Those are important for this game. Troy also so. shrugging, saying, might as well. Um, it's kind of a Hail Mary shot to take out a six health squadron over the course of a game. And one damage going on, Major Rhymer. Merrick uh, is unscathed from that uh, flak spray. He wants to go after the ISD. It is uh, a significant number of points in uh, Brandon's list. 132 points. Ooh, the inside turn. Bold. That is bold. He's turning in. 
with Admonition. Uh, he's going to take some long range damage from that ISD. So we've now, Troy's now committed to killing the ISD, it appears. I'm, I mean, he's if the ISD gets in his way, there's always that very narrow area here. The ISD could try and be get an Akbar slash going on, and it, those familiar with the Return of the Jedi Akbar slash, you drive your ships right in the middle of the opponent's ships, shoot out both your sides arcs, and fly away. Uh, who was it? Admiral Nelson, or is that Horatio Nelson? Who Horatio fight? Nelson. Yes. The uh, historic events, because as we know, Star Wars does draw on our history as a civilization. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so that could be a potential play. He's got a co potential conga line uh, with here with the squadrons, or sorry, not the squadrons, with his MC-30s to drive in between those ships. Squall doing its squall thing. Um, shunting another squadron. That looks like Darth Vader. And so it looks like his uh, TIE fighter and TIE interceptor aces are up there on the uh, debris field. Yep. So, so just moving Darth Vader uh, with Squall to put pressure on that injured side and force more uh, tokens to be utilized. So, so Darth Vader is, uh, you know, in my opinion, an amazing squadron. He uh, is very good at putting on the hurt. But uh, I don't see him a lot. Just, you know, I personally feel he's a little overcosted, but I love the squadron. So here comes the roll. Oh, Blink. Nothing. And that's, uh, that's Raider for you. <laughs> that's, that's my experience with him. But essentially, attacking ships, he's considered, almost considered a bomber. A bomber that can't resolve crit effects. So Troy's very relieved that that was a, a whiff because there's decent pressure coming on to that admo and he needs his defense tokens for later turns now uh, he has recovered an, an evade so it's, it's still sitting not as three. dire but potentially it just very keep scary. on putting on that chip damage chip 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 and eventually you get through the first little uh tiny tie fighter or um p shooter coming showing up it's going to be a blue die to the front Miss accuracy. Next pea shooter coming in. Miss with oh, another another slow and regrets right there. <laughs> a sigh from well, Brendan. We'll be keeping a tally at the side here, um, and just we will present Brendan to. Um, to Missed this. Sloan opportunities. Yes, actually, you know what? It'll be good. We'll follow this man all day. And we'll try and we'll make a bet to see if the Sloan opportunities equal his age. <laughs> Brendan turning in the Quasar with a nav token, increasing to speed two. And he's going to start cutting through those two rocks and putting some pressure and damage received from the Nebulon that's kind of tucked away at the back. Now, I'm, I'm curious why the admonition activated so early. Is there, there a reason for that, where he's got a lot of dead activation sitting in the top? I'm not sure. I think the Admonition has a little bit more survivability than the Foresight, so he may be preventing damage from piling on and losing an activation. Because now, now come the CR-90B, more for the flank. So I think he's just drawing activations. He's using up his activations to see where the ISD goes. I... I but to that point, he currently has six activations to Brendan's four, so both his MC-30s could have sat and waited, activated all the other small ships, and then potentially then have a grip, bit better picture where to go in and, you know, possibly dodge around the squadrons a little better. But So Troy is um, an expert at the Rebel MSU with high bid, so we'll see how it unfolds because... Both of us, uh, Jordan and I, we both play Imperials exclusively. Mm -hmm. That's uh, not true. I've been messing around with Radis. I'm sad. I like winning. <laughs> but here's the three reds coming from the ISD, but yes. So uh, neither <laughs> of us really have the, the intuition of uh, the all-ship player. Correct. So this is an unobstructed unob oh, shot. One, one, one damage. damage at long range from the 
ISD. And that apologies, unobstructed. It's only three reds from the front. It's yeah. an ISD one. And that uh, Mon that sorry, Whalex token coming back strong, already knocking off a damage, another damage, getting amazing value out of that. Ooh, an aggressive play from the ISD. Uh, just and this is going to be close. We're going to see if uh, where's black range. No racks on the Admo, just APT. Now again, I don't. I try not to sound critical too much, but if he had activated all his other things, the ISD would have been able to move. He would have potentially dodging that damage, and now you get to see where the ISD is placed. So if he ends up in black range, this could have potentially have been uh, an, an admonition coming in to double arc. So now, Brendan's probably not going to allow that to happen. As we can see, he slowed down I've, uh, with the nav token, or was that a dial? That, that was a um, standard speed to maneuver from an ISD. Okay. The catcher Smith forming on that ISD. And it'll be interesting to see if what Brendan has queued up next. Uh, just simply if he's going to be able to speed up to get out of this trap here. Um, so it looks like the... Uh, Foresight is in medium range to the ISD, and the Admo, I think they checked, and it was long range to the ISD. One activation remaining for Troy, and it is the support uh, Nebulon. It revealed a nav, spending the token. So it's going from speed 0 to speed 2 with the token and the dial. It's getting active. All right, let's go get ourselves some Quasar. <laughs> so... Here we have a, a situation where the Quasar's blue dice will likely be out of range of that uh, Nebulon. Now Ahsoka Tano being used, Ahsoka Tano? Yes, Tano. <laughs> so AT here is activating and, uh, and allowing, or triggering and allowing the Nebulon to switch out its tokens. So he's traded a Concentrate Fire for a Nav token. So I envision a lot of concentrate fires coming into that side of that quite very, very, well, sorry, the side, I mean the giant front arc of that very, very sad looking quasar. I'm excited because next turn he's probably going to jump to speed three and join the, the melee with the two MC30s. Ooh, so spicy. Troy's putting the, the pinch on that uh, ISD. EWS being moved to the front of the foresight. And Admonition is still there? Admonition appears to be in the back still. Mm. Uh, so we'll see if Troy uh, moves it to somewhere else. Yes, oh, there he we is. Go. What a player. Remembering the things. This is, this is a high-level gameplay. Remembering every single upgrade and using them properly. So there is the EWS. Both EWS tokens are now in the front of both MC30s. Nav coming in from the Mothma CR90B. And a curious hook. Continuing the game of repositioning. Speed 2. Nav. Is that comms net. Okay. Comms net a Nav token to the Quasar. And then the Gazanti will likely just float forward because it's obstructed from all sides. So uh, I guess that would imply that uh, there's going to be a squadron activation coming from the ISD and the Quasar. For Normally, sure the Quasar. I think the ISD will have uh, some other dial for to our surprise. Oh no, well that could, uh, well that looks like it's going to be some wasted squadrons then potentially. Well, actually I guess things will play out. They're in a good spot to sh uh, shoot the, squad, uh, the uh, MC-30 <laughs> as it moves through, especially if he runs over them. Nebulon. Nebulon going in. He is using skilled first officer on his Nebulon, discarding the top dial of his Nebulon. Just making sure he has the right buckets. So he discarded the correct bucket. <laughs> uh, it is a concentrate fire out of the Nebulon. That will be five reds with the slave turrets. Slave turrets increasing uh, one arc attack, but only being able to attack that. Uh, oh. he Ahsoka being used again. Ah, uh, nice. 
so a bit of a clarification error. Um, Troy thought of using Ahsoka to switch the nav to a conch fire, um, but Brendan correcting that the timing was incorrect. So Resulting in three damage as opposed to five. Five, that was two, a double. four. It four. was, it was uh, a crit? Yes. These fancy dice, all the sparkles and stuff, it's throwing off, throwing yeah. me off. But So redirect and brace used, taking two damage. If he, he redirects to the uh, starboard side, then still the MC-30s could potentially get some damage in. Yes. But if he puts it on the port side, then the Neb may just keep on chipping away at that side. Uh, looks like it's on the port side, so... Nav token Nav dropping to speed one. So now slowly just plinking away at that Quasar. The Quasar, uh, as you know, is a very fragile ship, only having a total of uh, four shields distributed two around each side, and then six hull, not very great tokens. Is it not? It's six hull, but it has seven shields in total? Ooh. It has six hull. Uh, we're wrong. It, has it turns out that you learn something every seven day. Hall, or six hull and seven shields. I, I always assume I that it just dies after it gets <laughs> shot. So, like, if, if anyone shoots at my quasar, I just remove it from the board. I, it might be alive, but I'm never sure. It's I just... No. Uh, the quasar did not take any hull damage there, but it took some shield damage on the port side. Oh, man. Strat advisor being used to waffle for some more time. Comms net being activated. Spending the dial. Yeah. We a learn something every day, right? Absolutely. A ship that I've played, what, <laughs> 10 times? Again, just, you know, normally I drifts into the front of an MC-30 and explodes, so. So selfish comms net. Uh, it uh, kept its token to turn in a little bit. Right now, squall being used to shunt some squadrons around. This may be his uh, normal activation. So there may be an attack now. And we come to the activation. It looks like a token there, so we could get five total activations. Or s let me Squadron yes. bucket being no. revealed. I apologize. Six tokens. They expanded hangar on there. So. so he is using the command dial, but he is not declaring the use of the squad token. The important thing to realize with timing is when you have the squadron dial, you must decide at that time whether to include the squadron token into the resolution or not. You can't use your four squadrons and then decide, do I use my token for that final activation? No, you have to do it up front and... Uh, it makes for a, a bit harder decision. So, activating a TIE fighter, interesting. A TIE fighter plinking away, a single damage. Yeah, to damage. That that beats our uh, panel of uh, casters. Uh, <laughs> beats our expectations. Uh, redirect. This is this is where the Admo game gets fun. Or fun for who? For Brendan, because he's watching. All of these tokens being spent. I don't know if Troy needed to spend that redirect just just there. I think he can take a little bit of damage. Normally when uh, Admonition spends tokens, I just get sad. <laughs> like, ah, I have a cool girl. Oh, there goes my crit effect. Miss. Ooh, I'm adding that to the Sloan counter. <laughs> Up to three mystery rolls. Interesting uh, to <laughs> see why he's activating his uh, the, the TIE Fighters. I, I, I'm guessing there has to be a, a squadron command coming because... I would wager so. If, if the bombers don't get activated... Sloan counter up to four. If the bombers this, don't get activated... This is why Sloan is now and forever the best Imperial Admiral. You hear, heard it here, uh, and we're seeing it now. Excuse me. Are you forgetting our friend, the Senate? I cannot wait to just cackle maniacally playing him i have gotten great value out of the officer on an ssd oh my god just like oh yeah spend your tokens spend your tokens eh, eh. and then just just you know move on with my life but a uh double vader. hit from vader being re-rolled to a single hit uh thanks to value. mon mothma value Mon mothma at a similar price point to admiral modi has certainly outclassed him so Admiral far. Modi, in my opinion, the worst Imperial Admiral. How? That, that is a different, uh, 
discussion for another day. A blank out roll from Darth Vader. Again, going back to not having the re-rolls, I know it's, it's really rough. Vader taking a coffee break and healing back up to full. Um, yeah, I'm curious though, is uh, Jendon in... In Jendon in range of the ISD for activation, because that's the only way he would be able to reach someone like Merrick Steele or... Well, or it seems like there's a little dinky TIE fighter at the back. No, that's Merrick. All right, well, uh, we'll Merrick's find a, out. It's, uh, hard, it's hard to, for me to gauge the distance between this idea. I believe that's Jendon there. Is that medium? I'm not sure. Quays are firing at the front of the Nebulon. Uh, Troy reminding Brendan that is the most wanted ship. Brendan happily rolling one more blue dice. Three damage, and he blocks and evade. So brace to two damage. Brendan looking to increase the speed three to get that Quasar out of any potential harm. The Nebulon having slave turrets. Uh, there's no fear of getting that Quasar double arced and, and destroyed. I f he might even... His rear might be... A just out of that arc, front arc. Come on, Brendan, you locked it in. Move it. Thank you very much. And, and a nice position. Oh, oh, he did it. Oh, and he dodged. Look at that arc dodge from that fragile quasar. This will be the... F I don't want to speak too soon. First quasar that survives on a stream. A nav coming out of the quantum storm. Is quantum storm going to arrive when needed? Look at that. Troy estimating the arrival of the Quasar to the Quantum Storms section of the field at turn five. I think that is excellent planning. He's so smart. On, on Troy's part. That's so smart. So Merrick getting activated with Squadron Command via relay from Jendon. So two damage. Turns into two crits from Merrick's ability. Troy, now the damage is starting to pile on. Uh, Brendan noting the mistake of uh, not activating Jendon first. So now Merrick must remain in place. Had he done it the other way, he could have uh, repositioned Merrick uh, for a subsequent turn. A redirect being used. Uh, Merrick should, would be, still be able to move. He just needs to be within the Jendon range. So he could bring him back a touch if he felt like. Mm-hmm. Now the Jendon activation. Another attack from Merrick to the side. One hit and two one hit. crit. Yep. Apologies. Yep, two hits, two crit, one crits. Ad mowing away the crit. We admonition is down to one of aid, one redirect, I believe. Yes. Um, we don't have a good eye on the shields, but uh, I can imagine that the far side, the port side of the admonition has not taken much damage so hopefully Troy has uh, some engineering commands lined up to redistribute shields whenever one of my ships goes down and has shields remaining I I consider that to be a mistake on my part because that's lost value in my fleet so if I have a if I have a VSD that goes down with one shield on its side well that's a mistake on me for not uh, reorganizing and repositioning shields during my turn to extend the life of that ship. So Admo, very much the same thing. If it goes down with shields, uh, that's a mistake on the player controlling the ship. So the ISD is shooting on the Foresight. Three reds, two blues. So Brendan deliberating the, the different options. So he opted for a medium range shot on Foresight instead of a long range shot on Admo. Blocking the evade. Three damage. A evade is going to be used to reroll two dice, selecting which two dice to be rerolled. Oh, and Durlin as well. And Major Durlin being used to cancel one damage. Oh, I, we forgot to mention Mothma cancels the dice at medium range as well. So, so three zero. damage. Three Gone. damage removed. Mon Mothma. Demonstrating What's going to be bigger, that the Mon Mothma value or the Sloan losses? Uh, definitely Mon Mothma is showing stronger value, much stronger value than, than Modi. <laughs> than the Modi. 
<laughs> ah, yes. Modi, worst commander in the game. I'm rating him lower than Taggy. Ha That's right. You're hearing it worst here. Worst commander in the game. Oh, even worse than Leia? Leia, Leia has some um, potential value of a, out of a hammerhead swarm. But it's uh, so expensive. It doesn't matter the price. Modi is just trash. Okay. We're coming in with ISD maneuvering. I he's going to try and evade the side arcs of those uh, frigates. So good positioning on Troy's part. Uh, Brendan looking for a potential JJ maneuver to get out of this mess. Now he's got to be careful with those maneuvers not to overlap his own stick. I think he should be fine. If he, if he did that two-speed maneuver with a double tick to the, the left and then the single tick to the right, he can potentially hit his Gazanti and do that crazy JJ inside turn that we were talking about earlier. Now, I'm, I mean, the, the viewers of the stream can't see my hand motions, but it's a very good move, believe me. I know we're filling time here, but this is a very, very hard decision Brendan's got to make. He's got two angry shrimps loaded with black dice and knives, and they're coming for a stab infest on a big whale. Looks like he's dropping to speed two. And an ISD, in my experience, can take three to four tops shots from a MC-30. So if he gets double arced by both of them at close range, he will go down, is my prediction. Maybe he will overlap here. We don't have uh, the, the caster eye. He does not overlap. So he gets a bit of, he gets his own EWS, uh, courtesy of the station, but still in black range. They're checking for arcs. So side arc may be in uh, nope. medium range. It is not in medium range. So he avoided an arc. Is it in range period is, was the first question. So it is, uh, I, I think they've measured no. Yeah. Admo has a nav. Will be spending the dial. Shooting from the front. Obstructed removing the blue. Value. Two dice. Two black dice. Uh, Ordnance expert reroll. And there it is. The uh, first hit crit for the APT trigger. Uh, is that a hit crit? I don't think that is. Again, uh, at the caster <laughs> table, we're playing with pixels. Uh, it appears to be a hit crit. I am calling it here. You be the judge. Brace and redirect being used. That was not a crit card. No, it, that, that dice, it was just very shiny on the side. Oh, all these custom dice are really confusing. Sometimes the dice are gold. Sometimes they have sparkles. Yep. Sometimes they're... I don't know. They're just misprinted and they didn't fill in with the, the white. So <laughs> my my black dice I always have like five or six blanks on them. So I I've never been a uh, you know a fan of them. And um, as a side point, condolences to all um, X-wing players who have previously won world <laughs> dice. Um, you can now <laughs> buy the set of uh, world championship dice from Star Wars Outer Rim. If you're into X-Wing and you want to feel like a world champion, uh, pick up Star Wars Outer Rim. So the Missed uh, opportunity to do some uh, side shots uh, on a Gazanti or on some squadrons. Navigate uh, coming out from Troy, seeing what he can set up for next round. Again, Troy is first player. In this situation, would you not want to try and block, I know this is sounding stupid as I'm saying, try and block the ISD from moving and capture, try and keep one ship in the front to stop it from moving and ha just have the other one, other MC-30 in the back. Because now there's going to be one shot and the ISD is going to potentially fly away. I think there's a nav token. That's, so that's fine. He, he may be protecting his admonition. So it may fly away at uh, top speed, put EWS on the back and uh, there's going to be nothing that Brendan can do. But then you're in a situation where you haven't killed anything, and these squadron, the Sangri squadron ball is going to move towards that nebula. With this, with this list, you've got to get, you know, I, with any list, you've, you've got, you do have to kill some things or claim some objectives. Side to side shot. 
no gre no green redirect from uh, first shot, front to side shot, not obstructed. Front to side. Using a redirect. Ah. Apologies, front to side. I forgot which side to which side or which front. Pushing that one damage to the front. Uh, Inside uh, turn, yes. yes. Would just, does this ISD just take one shot and then just float away? I, I think right now he's in okay shape. I think he can take three more uh, MC30 shots. Uh, this is... Yeah, and uh, I, I, there, there, there's quite a bit of pressure on that ISD. Yeah. It, it's, it's not out of the woods yet. And I, I don't know how to make the call on how that ISD is doing. It's on the station, so it's, it's okay, but it's in precarious waters yeah. because of those shrimps. And uh, I love Troy's positioning with those two shrimps where there's not much space inside the two of them to put too many squadrons mm -hmm. uh, to keep damage up on the admonition. Round five, uh, starting, all of Brendan's squadrons were activated. So they're just measuring here. So in what I believe is going to happen is we're going to have admonition activate first. Follow, maybe the ISD starts limping away. The ISD jumps up to speed three and then fly out of uh, Foresight side arc. Um, EWS being re repositioned to the side of the uh, number two admonition. And he's it keeping it in the front of the foresight to prevent damage from the side arc. Yeah. Admonition going first. Engineering. Engineering. Excellent choice. I am so happy to see that. He said he wishes he has a nav, though. Because he's flying very fast, so... I don't think I don't think Admo, even if it turns, would be in play. So I think engineering is the, the right choice. Mm -hmm. And it is such a tasteful command on an MC-30. Uh, all you people putting in your uh, concentrate fire and navigate commands all day long. I, I mean, a, a true classy individual puts in a squadron and engineering command on an MC-30. Uh, side to side. There's See, there's your hit crit. It's very hard to Is see. Is that two hit I crits that so. I see? That might be. And the uh, accuracy. accuracy. No brace. Got him. Delicious. Delicious. So this is this is the the pain that a a shrimp inflicts, and Brendan's gonna start piling on damage cards. Six damage right now. Well, we'll see. Maybe they'll be nice and show us the crit. What's gonna be the crit? Redirect, and the crit is point defense. Point defense. Point failure. defense failure. As if Brendan was gonna shoot at Shouldn't the squadrons that uh, Troy has not brought today. This crit is a non-issue. Shenanigans being declared at the table. We will have a judge investigate immediately. Uh, Brendan debating using uh, his BT and Avengers to try and inflict as much damage on that. On uh, the foresight. On the foresight. Full health foresight. With an obstructed shot. With obstructed shot. Or some more butt shots on uh, that Admiral. All right, so it appears he's attacking at the side. Yes, I did not pop DT or event uh, BT. Yikes. That, Yikes. Is, that is a dud of a shot. I had Major Durlin <laughs> takes out whatever rolled. It didn't. Non-issue. Uh. Non uh, BT Avenger would have been very disappointing there, where Major Dernalyn would have cleaned up that single damage. He provides the salt for the wounds of yeah, Imperial absolutely. players everywhere. So, so far we have two value out of Major Dernalyn, countless value out of Mon Mothma. Uncount uncountable value. Uncountable. Un uncountable only because we are not doing our due diligence as casters. Uh, someone shot uh, for a few dice. Um, yeah, butt shot out the back. Redirect being used, two damage. Engineering coming into play, I bet. Navigating away with the ISDs at speed two. Oh no, he stayed two. So wait, is he popping to three? Yes, it looks like he's going three. That is a three ruler. We're trying so, to sneak away from the neb. Interesting. I. 
you know, at this point, you got to go for points somehow. So it looks like he's relying on squadrons to kill things. Because yep. the, maybe the squadrons are just going to jump after the Nebulon. That's the thing with Admo. You have some early damage on it, and then it disengages. And that's a, that's a, that's a bitter feeling. But so good, good play, good play on um, Troy's part if he manages to escape with it, and hedging the effects of the Most Wanted. Okay. JJ coming to play, uh, shield being lost for extra tick, double okay. tick uh, put in, extra yaw put in for the highest yep. speed with the nav bucket. Uh, was there an overlap on that no. debris field? There nope. was not. Um, it's it's really interesting. Even even the same even the same list flown between different players, it's going to look totally different Absolutely. because everyone has its that's their own style and Armada is very fluid for for commands. So um, we're making calls heavily as squadron players. Um, so having Troy make these decisions is out of our comfort zone. Having Brendan fly in this manner, Brendan's typically an all ship player, he makes choices that we may not necessarily see. And so Brendan, good, good maneuvering, good dodging of uh, the, the threat. And then uh, the squadron play being as, as strong as he can make it and, and trying to eke as much value out of it as, as he can, which against admonition, you've got to, you really have to throw the whole kitchen sink at it at once, as we've said multiple times. So finally, we get a squall activation. He's going to make a decision if he's going to go after the Nebulon or if he's going to try and chase down these MC-30s. And Nebulon's a very fragile ship. If uh, people aren't familiar with it, its shields are a 3-1-1-2. The, the thing that is a killer for the ship is no redirects. Double brace evade. Now, it'll get value out of the evade. It probably will not get any value out of the, re out of the braces, except first is the Mer Merrick Steel Squadron. I guess he's going to get one round of squadron fire. It might be enough. Actually, I lied. Maybe two rounds of squadron fire. I forgot which side was been activated. So, two squadron. Act, there's two rounds of squadrons into the probably the front first, and then the side. We'll see how it uh, plays out. Oh, looks like he's going to be able to move Reimer to get to the side. Determining what he's going to move there. I don't believe. Did Reimer shoot? I don't believe so. Uh, did not see any dice rolled. Maybe he's moving everything to then shooting, but I, you know, I would assume that he's shooting. Oh, for a TIE Fighter miss? Uh, that's another one of the TIE Fighters. Uh, Next squadron going in. That appears to be Vader. Yes. Vader going into the side of that delicious Nebulon. Even with Rhymer, it appears that he's running out of space to pummel that side up. Oh, Two dice. Go. Mon Mothma. Yep. Blank. Nothing. And gonna... this is why Modi is garbage. <laughs> Mothma is the way of the future. Um, <laughs> so much damage. <laughs> so much damage. Oh, I can't even say that with a straight face. Uh. Um, Mothma pro providing so much damage and mitigation in, in this particular game. So... Next is, is that Merrick? That is Merrick. It's moving Merrick. distance five. You, he's uh, painted nicely red. Uh, he, Merrick has a Rhymer range and will be shooting the front. Two crits. Race is to one, though. Jenden. Second shot. Hit crit. So another brace going to be used. Potentially, uh, Troy considering what to do. There it is. Face-up damage coming. What's it going to be? Engineering value reduced by half. Now, another thing that we don't see very often is engineering on a Nebulon. I have never, ever seen anyone replenish that single shield 
on the side. Well, normally there's this card called Yavaris stapled to the side of a Neb, and it's going to activate squadrons until it dies. So, <laughs> I one more, oh. one more damage oh, uh, coming in from a squadron. As we keep track of slow, and it looks like JJ got side the side to side. Sorry, just reading the comments here. Yep. JJ did keep the, uh, the Quasar out of the Neb front and did prevent the ISD from hitting the debris field. I absolute, you are absolutely correct. But we're looking for ammunition to make fun of Brendan later. So <laughs> we're going to ignore that. But you are absolutely correct. Yes, it, uh, if it definitely not for, saved. If not for JJ, uh, it, it would be a very sadder board state yeah. uh, right now because he would not be able to escape the that catch. Yeah. Absolutely true. So we just uh, mentioned the Neb B is now down to two hall, and uh, I think was that a I, I don't he know misspoke. he misspoke. Yeah. Okay. He took two damage. He has three hall left. Okay, three hall left. Yes. I gotta say this might be the end of that Nebulon. Uh, such a pity. It had uh, it had a good run trying to take out that Quasar. It came close. Uh, rolling those five dice. Rolling any number of dice. But close. it's it's the curse of the Yavaris, as uh, uh, Victor likes to call it, where you roll a unmodified three red dice only to see disappointment. You need some sort of re-roll ability for your red dice, otherwise it's only going to lead to shame. Now the, the Quasar is uh, <laughs> looking to get a punch from Jurgerod to potentially get some double arcs on those GR75s <laughs> and get those 18 to 22 points trying to make their way around the side of the board. So <laughs> a bit of sneakiness from the Quasar thanks to Jurgerod. A lot of utility value for Brendan opening up uh, the board. From the way that he deployed to trace out these arcs, it's uh, it's really hard to predict as the Rebel player where these Jirgerod ships will go. Nav on the foresight, blue range to the ISD. I believe... No, he is not. He's looking to ram that Gazanti. That's what I would do. I would take out my frustrations on that Gazanti um, and call it a day. <laughs> I, I see no other uh, path forward. No. Nope. Uh, just the front arc. Has the Gazanti activated? Uh, the Gazanti, I don't believe, has activated All this right. round. Nothing uh, obstructed. Brendan commenting on how he needs those squadrons now. Again, no rerolls. Or he's this. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that is not the petty ventral play that I would have done. Yeah, I would. I would have ran that that thing and then sped up my Nebulon and tried to, to go at it from the front. Has the Nebulon activated? I don't know. Now, of course, this is us talking as uh, armchair admirals over yes. here. The objective is uh, most wanted. The uh, Nebulon is the most wanted ship on from Troy's fleet and the Gazanti is the most wanted uh, ship for Brennan's side. There's uh, three hull remaining on the Nebulon. Uh, it's starting to take a bit of uh, water in space. Uh, so it's in, in trouble. So uh, Brendan putting pressure on the Nebulon with the squadron. So it was a pretty good setup, but the way that the board unfolded with uh, um, I don't I don't think Troy quite predicted or was able to, would have been able to predict how it went. Uh, navigate on the Gazanti. Uh, he's looking to make his escape, potentially going to his death in the arc of that Nebulon. So hopefully we will see some miracle rolls and take out that pesky Gazanti. I believe. He's going to JJ turn towards <laughs> that Nebulon. It Get also him. potentially could block the movement of the Nebulon, keep it in place. Uh, that's That would not be the train of thought I would be going for. I would be looking to uh, get that most wanted double arc on the Nebulon from my Gazanti. That would be my objective at this point of the game. Double arc oh, established. No. Is that medium range as well? Medium range. Now, I, I hope there's a concentrate fire coming th from that Nebulon. Speed 2. 
uh, Comsnet uh, GR75, spending a navigate dial and uh, trying to run away from the closing jaws of the Quasar and flanking ISD. <laughs> Nebulon. Nav. 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 Yes. That's not a concentrate fire. That's also not an engineering. All right. Four red dice. Four red dice into... Four I red dice into that uh, Gazanti. Dude. All right. Counting up the dice. Oh, most wanted? Oh, and it's the most wanted ship. Is there? Uh, that's a scatter. Oh, oh. Much disappointment. Oh. <sighs> Where Though, was? If those two blanks were accuracies, we would have had a game. Uh, <laughs> there's a ram. Man. Turn six. We will get the blood that is desired by the stream. Uh, Actually, twisted steel and metal. Brandon just there. Uh, Demonstrating the fact that he has a damage deck from uh, 2019 <laughs> Worlds participation prize. He did, in fact, participate. And uh, I believe he placed uh, in the in the cut to day two. So, got on him. Yep. But uh, custom damage deck. Very nice. Very fancy. I, I found out uh, before that I was, I was playing with a damage card short for about a year. No oh. one noticed. Oh, no. Uh, luckily, none of my opponents uh, counted my damage deck. So, oh, geez. Um, yeah, if if you want to beat the 2017 uh, Armada <laughs> World Champion, uh, be sure to count the damage deck before the start of the game because Absolutely. there's a good chance that you can disqualify him right, right off the bat. We got the oh, there's accuracy. the AC. Come on! I don't know if you can hear me clapping. Yeah, he got it. He got it. He Where? got it. And the escape path. <laughs> Speed two. Speed okay. two. Is he going to leverage that single shield on the opposite side to get a little more health out of the... Uh, um. Brendan turning to uh, the caster table, uh, yelling at the casters for uh, cheering the death of the Gazanti. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. dead. Uh, we're calling it now. Uh, we don't often place bets, but... I think this is a surefire side arc uh, from the ISD. I think Merrick can just kill it alone with the guarantee. <laughs> oh, right. I forgot about the Mon Mothma factor. The Mon Mothma factor. Re-rolling that crit. Now, it's it's commented that only pros know to remove all structural damage cards. That's incorrect. The the card that was removed was a projector misalignment. Oh, how which, dare you. How dare you. <laughs> which... I think I might have ripped it up out of rage. Um, there was a tournament where first shot of the game was a some sort of APT crit on a full health ISD, got a projector misalignment, and then that four damage just made it a very sad day. That that happened into a, a Corellian campaign game, all out assault Corellian campaign. The ISDs <laughs> dropped on the rear line, admonition showed up, and projector misaligned one of the capital ISDs. The ISDs survived. But we were mad. Pack it up. Uh, we're going home, guys. <laughs> uh, we got a projector misalignment turned up. For the record, though, uh, we have, oh, right, 50 points, most wanted ship. I was, I was just wondering how did Troy score so many points. But there we go, 50 points. So we have Major Rhymer activating, trying to get some of the final shots. He's going to be a major jerk and probably roll a hit crit. Or a blank. It, who, who's he a jerk to? He's got to be a jerk to one of the players, but a savior to the other. Let's see. Which Single one? hit. Both our predictions were off. Who would have thunk that it was a 50% chance? All right. Two hall. Two left. hall left. <laughs> Merrick double tap should be able to finish it off without a shield. Famous last words. Uh, but Brendan rolling his blue dice, we never know. <laughs> Right. Double crit. Brace to one. Structural. Structural. Oh, All right. right. That's the game, folks. There goes all my theory crafting. There goes the dream. <laughs> uh, Troy had already packed up his maneuver templates <laughs> prior to this roll. Uh, and the rest is strictly procedural. Uh, there's, they're counting up anything else that can happen in this game. 
Good yep, game. They call it. So 109 to 50. Uh, I believe, is that a 7 4? Or is that still just a 6 What five? is the breakdown? Is it at uh, 60 points? Yeah, 60 points. 70 points? 80 points. Oh. 80, 80, 80. 50, 80, 80. 59. 59. 59. Oh, no. Oh, one point short. So all that work for a 6 5. These are both very good players, so what happens is if you get evenly matched games, you're going to get very tight scores, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So an easy way to remember when is a 6-5, when is a 7-3, uh, and so on, it's 60, 70, 80, 80, 80. So 60 and above, it's 6-5, add 70 to that, so 130 is your 7-3, add 80 to that, it's your... Whatever math, I'm, <laughs> yeah. not, I'm not adding it up, but you get the gist of what I'm yeah. saying, right chat? Yeah. Perfect. Well, one of us is an engineer, the other one is a geologist. Someone should know their math a little better. Oh wait, you don't use numbers, you just use letters. Right? I, I use lookup tables, and <laughs> uh, at this point it's all programming. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, I believe that will be it.